Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're all doing well. So I'm on for my last design team project for April for Witchcraft Do Do using the Vintage Flowers Set 2 kit. So what I want to do today is play around with some of my photo slides. Now I have a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot of these. And I do like messing around with them, so I thought it's a good excuse to have a bit of a play. So a bit of an experiment today. You can just cut the shapes out with your knife on some cardstock or something and make your own slides, of course, because these can get a little bit bulky. But they're quite easy to take apart. You can just slip your fingernail or a knife or something in between the layers, pull them apart, and then just pull the negative out. It's stuck down with a bit of glue. So you can just pull it out like that. So I like to keep the negatives. This one's cool. It's got a fountain somewhere in Australia, a little fountain. So yeah, I keep them for other projects because they look quite good in um, journals as embellishments. So I'll do the same with this one. Now, most of the slides I've got have like the dots and writing on them. Some are in pencil, some are in pen. Uh, which is a little annoying but it happens so you might like it though because it does say uh, a lot of them you can read and see where the pictures are taken pull that one out all right so i'll put the backs to the side we will use them to put it back together but for now we just want the tops so what i have been doing i was Debating what to do with these, I I have covered them before and that, but I thought I would try and put a bit of colour on them today. So I was thinking alcohol inks, and then I thought maybe um, gesso and watercolour, but then I settled on gesso and acrylic. So I've got my gesso here, I've just got some Montmartre gesso, and a paintbrush. So I'm just going to go over them with a layer of gesso. Now, if you wanted to cover the writing, you could try and do a thick layer of gesso and then go over it a couple of times. But it takes a bit of doing. I find with this sort of um, writing that it shows through the gesso a lot. And I'm not very good at getting thick layers. <laughs> so, um, But there are other ways of covering it up when you're embellishing as well. So I wouldn't worry too much, but... So I'm just going to paint the gesso on like so. And this stuff dries really, really quick, so it won't take long to dry and get on with the next step. So I do like my light paint lines going in the same direction, so I'll go over it in the end all in the same direction. Just try and neaten it out so I haven't got these bulky bits of paint anywhere. And then put that to the side to dry. Oh, there's a bit there that's not very neat. That will be okay. And the same with this. Now see, you can't see it very much there, but I don't like having the lines in the gesso. So the more I play around with it, the more you'll be able to see it. And as it dries, you'll see it a bit more too. So it's up to you how much you worry about trying to cover it up there in this step. They are authentic vintage slides. I think a bit of writing just makes them look like authentic vintage slides. Put them to the side and I'll leave them to dry for about 10 minutes while I go and rinse my brush out ready for the next step. Now I have this, it's faux art acrylic paint, which you need to shake up a fair bit, so I'll do that. Now this is quite old and lumpy. I got it off of Marketplace a while back, um, so it's not in the best condition, so I'm using it up. 
but I love the colour and I don't mind that it's a bit like watery and patchy and that. So this is what I am using for this project. So I've just got a little plastic mat here that I use for everything. So I'm just putting some out on that. Oh, that looks thicker. That's good. I probably used all the water last night and I'm just left with the good stuff now. I'm just squishing it a bit to get some of the lumpy bits mixed in. And so again, we just go and paint some of that on. It's a nice pastel minty color, which I like. Oh, try not to move it as I do it. Again, I like my paint lines going in one direction for this. And then put that to the side to dry. Now you can see as the gesso has dried that the, the writing almost stands out even more that's what i mean by it looks like it covers it up a bit but it seems to almost make it worse so that's why i don't bother trying to cover the writing with the gesso because i end up just putting so many layers of gesso on and wasting my gesso so i rather just embrace the writing or do something else to cover it up Trying to sort of get it even because you get some thick bits down the side there. So that will do. Put that one to the side. Try not to put your fat finger in there. So we'll let those dry. So here's one that I did last night that's had that one coat dry. So what I do is go back in then and put another coat on. There. And my brush seems to lose all sorts of dust and fluff on doing this sort of thing. That's why I've started storing my brushes in a drawer rather than leaving them in a cup out in the open. All right, so that's the second coat. So, you know, it's a quite bit different once you put the second coat on. So that's what I'm doing, just doing the two coats. I have finished a whole lot of my slide fronts here. Now, what I'd like to try is maybe to stencil some texture paste, which I'm not very good at. And these are some really small areas to do it. I thought we'd give it a go on a couple of these. So I might just do three with the texture paste. And so will we do four? We might do four. And I just grabbed these two stencils because they've got small, little small designs. So good luck to me. So now, if I had pre-thought this, what I could have done was the texture paste before I painted and then paint over the top. But I don't mind. I've got two coats of paint on here. What I'm going to do is mix a little bit of the paint in with my texture paste. Just to colour it up a bit. So I'll give my paint another shake. And I'll get some of my texture paste out. Sure. 
It shouldn't need too much for this. That should be plenty, hopefully. Let's see how we go. Haven't done this for ages. And I haven't done it a lot, so usually you don't need a lot of paint to get colour in. So we'll see how that goes. But you want to mix it quite well because you don't want the um, white bits. Okay, so let's see what sort of a mess we can make here. So I might start with my daisy and we'll do two with that. So we'll just do a bit down bottom in one of the corners. And down along the bottom like that would be quite nice, wouldn't it? So maybe, is that the bottom here? Yeah. Don't know how this is going to go because they're very small little details. But we'll smush it on and see. Just spread it over. Oh, that looks nice. A bit there that we don't want. A bit there that we don't want. So I'm going to have to let that dry for a few hours, so we'll do our texture pasting and then we'll let those ones dry and then I've got a couple left over that we will go ahead and embellish in the meantime. Oh my goodness, it's working. Isn't that cute? Not very well lined up, but... Hey, I'm happy with that. For me, that is good. Just got to not touch them there. So I must remember to clean your stencils and that off pretty quick <laughs> with this stuff. Or else it'll dry like rock. So I'll go and wash them afterwards. I'm just not getting the, the most of it off. Okay, now let's see what we can do now with this one somewhere. if I didn't keep accidentally lifting it. Clean up the sides. So I'm not too keen on that there. I could get it off. Oh, it's still wet. It's not too bad. That's not too bad. I quite like that. All right, so they're going to have to dry for a good few hours, I think. I haven't got too much left over, which is good. Probably only need to do one tag, maybe. But I can put it on a tag and then paint over it if I want. Oh, 
Oh, that looks lovely. I don't think I'd even bother painting over that. Quite like it. So I have three slides left here. Now this one's only got one coat of the green on. You can, I don't know if you'll be able to see. This one's a little bit darker, the ones that I've done the two coats on. Not too much difference though, but we're still going to use that one. I've got three of the bases, so you can put something underneath that and stick that onto a tag, a journaling card or a page. It makes a really cool embellishment. But today we're using the flowers again with their mirror images folded over. So we'll be able to see the flower through both sides. So it makes sense to use the other side as well. So I've gone and cut some of my transparency sheets into little rectangles. What I did was measure in between the little, when you break your slide open, you can see these little dots here that stick together and help hold your slide together. I cut the window so it sits within those and I tried to leave enough room to be able to glue them down. There's still a bit of glue on these and that holds pretty well. So you possibly don't need to glue this side, but we will add a tad anyway. So we'll, we'll add our windows to both sides of our slides. So I'll turn these over. This one isn't flat, that's a different type of slide. I'm just going to use my tweezers to help me position where I want them. Is my glue going to come out today? Oh, it's the wrong glue, that's why. <laughs> Get the right glue now. Much better. Got some already on my new window. So try and get that off without smearing. Wow, that glue spread heaps far under there, hasn't it? Interesting. So that's one window. So yes, not too much glue. Okay, so we should have all of the windows that we need stuck in now. So I'll put these ones to the side. God, and I just realized to use my fabric glue. What I have done is, now I printed out a whole lot of these from the kit. And I have folded up one of those and cut it out. So we might use that. I don't think I downsized that one. But I did manage to resize which was fun, not <laughs> a whole lot of these. Now, if you open up, sometimes when you open up your digitals in paint or something, you can play around a bit and resize things. So that works with some of them. And then I found on my printer program, when I clicked on print, it would come up and there'd be a tab saying, edit image or something like that. And I clicked on that and that enabled me to resize stuff as well. So I was able to, oh, they're all the ones I was looking for before. I was able to like resize a whole lot like that. The only thing is you waste a whole heap of your page around it, but I keep these bits and I'll use them for other things. So I printed out a whole lot like that at different sizes. So they turn out like this. So then I could cut them, like with these ones, you'd cut them down there. And then you can just fold the square 
in half and you get these two and these two with their mirror images. And then I'd fold them over in half with a bit of glue and then they're ready like this to fussy cut out and they're the same on both sides. So that's what I had been doing. So these ones I haven't folded yet. They're tiny, tiny, so a bit of fun fussy cutting those. So basically I'd fold these down the middle, add some glue, and then they'd end up like this, and then you'd fussy cut them, and then they're ready to go. So I've got a whole heap there I can play around with, because I thought I wanted really, really small flowers like that to put in there which is really cool. So I <laughs> fussy cut a few of them out. That was fun. Uh, tiny like that. Aren't they cute? Which works all right. Behind there. And a little fern leaf that you can put in with them, which is really cool. So I was thinking of doing that sort of thing. But then I grabbed this big one that I had already that was gonna be for another project. I put that behind and I really love that. Just sort of in like that. I'm thinking maybe I should put the bigger ones in there. But of course you could size them down a little bit more if you wanted to and that sort of thing. So then you can do them sideways. Portrait or landscape, whichever way you want. So maybe we'll stick this one in for starters anyway. So I don't think we need the stem on him. My little dust cloth before we close up our windows. So we'll find a back for this. Yep, that's going to work. And we'll give it a little dust. Just on the inside windows. And we'll put a little flower in where we want it. Now he might stop it from closing, so you can trim him if need be. Looks like it might just fit all right. If it's too bulky, we can trim him. Just debating where I want that um, dot. Rather it not be on there, but we're sort of stuck with it. I think that's so sweet. Do we want it there or do we want it over that side? I like it over that side. Okay, and then we're going to have to, we will glue it a bit to close it. So I think I might use my Hellman's fabric glue for this. And just get a little bit around the outside. Just a tad around here and there. To help it stay shut. And try to close it where it's meant to close. You could put some clips on it at this stage or just put something heavy on it. Pressing those edges in. So then we've got our flower on both sides. If you wanted to, you could paint the back as well, but I don't mind it being like that. Could embellish the back too if you wanted. So I grabbed some of the labels from the bits and pieces set four because the colour matches brilliantly. So I thought that would go nicely, especially to help cover up some of the um, pieces that have writing in that on them. So I thought we could use bits of those. So let's find one of them that we like. 
and if we put it over that, it would have to be off center sort of over there and it would cover up a little dot as well was my thoughts. Do I want to ink? I don't really think I want to ink for these. Fortunately, with their kits, they do a lot of the um, inking for us, really, don't they? Which is lovely. You could, if you wanted to, ink around the edges and that. I don't have a colour like uh, this green in inks. Well, I probably do if I hunted through all my inks, but I don't want to do that. So. so I'm thinking something like that. The other thing I have is some of this bling. I could put bling on the red dot, but it's not quite, it's not big enough to really cover it up. It doesn't really have to be, though. So anyway, let's have a look at our labels. Because I definitely want a label on there. I might just stick with this one and put it on. And then, the lovely Kerry from Witchcraft Do You Do sent me some of this gorgeous cheesecloth. So I thought, why not use some of this on here as well? Oh yes, I like that. So where are my, I can't find my little scissors, but I did hear a whole lot of stuff go bang off my desk. Oh, there they are, about a meter away on the floor. So I'll grab them afterwards. Oh, I love that. That is beautiful. It's a bit of fabric glue. Oops. That's done so well. where I need my greaseproof paper. could do some stamping down here or something too, but I mean, you know me, keep things pretty clean. Got to get my little scissors now. I really like that. That's really cute. Nice way to jazz up a slide. So there's that little altered slide. And that's the back. You could do a little blank writing spot or something there, actually. Or just cover it um, all together with some paper. I might do a template sometime um, and cut out some uh, vintage book paper or something and cover them with vintage book paper or just do gesso and leave the gesso on there you can write on your gesso so that might be an idea for future ones to just gesso this side might do that with other ones that i do in the future but there's the words that i showed you last time that come with the kit there's the ones with the white background ones with the black background i've pulled out one with the white background and it says Every flower blooms in its own time. And I thought that would be a really sweet saying to put on one of these as well. And it fits nicely and it'll cover up all the writing. So that's an option too for covering things up. 
but I will have to ink around that. So I'll have to find something I'm happy with for that. Or we'll cut the words out a bit more too, which I might do. But first we've got to find our bloom. So I've got these three flowers here. These teeny tiny ones. So they were this type and I've just cut around here. So you cut, fussy cut it out on one side, you turn it over and then cut any crooked bits that you've done because there were some sort of white edges on the other side that I cut off because I did cut these real close. I didn't leave a border. So we'll just position those somehow. How it makes me happy. But nothing much makes me happy, so... do all right don't want to be too fussy and then we put a glue around and not too close to the window it's just a few dibs here and there so that when it seals it stays sealed hopefully Just apply some pressure for a while. Make sure the other one's nicely sealed. Yep, that's sealed nice by the feels. Brilliant. So that's the back. That looks kind of cool, doesn't it? Hopefully they won't move around much because the transparencies sort of sandwich them in there nicely. And then I managed to find an ink because I forgot I had these stamping spots and I think this colour, which is sh Sage Shadow, should go quite nicely. So we'll have a look at that. So I've just found a spare dauber to go around the edges and see what we think. use these inks much so I'm not quite sure what they're like so that's just the edge done we definitely need to take it in a bit Open it off because I don't want to get it too dark on there. I have to put a bit of pressure on it by the looks. Yeah, now I'm getting a bit of colour on there. Let's have a look at that. It's not too bad. It's better than having it stark white, I think. So we'll do the same with this one. Now I printed um, these all out on just regular copy paper because I didn't want the flowers too thick as we're folding them, you know, doubling them up to fit them into our little windows. And could go around the edge. You can also do the edges of your window before you put your transparencies in if you wanted to. Oops. 
Oops, I'm getting it everywhere now. Might as well just go in a bit over here now to even it out. <laughs> and down there, why not? Oh, it's a nice colour. Now, so we've got our words ready. Now, shall we put some cheesecloth on before we put our words on, is my thought. So we'll grab the cheesecloth again. We don't need a lot of it. Just like that'll do. Just help cover up that red dot again. Now, do we need our bling this time to cover up our red dot more? It's not too offensive now with the cheesecloth. But, why not use our bling while we've got it? That looks a bit, could do three. I think not. We won't use it this time. Could use something else if I find something suitable I'll put it on afterwards but I'll just cut this little bit off that's better so they're the two that we've got so far and I think they're really cute and then that's the back and as I said you could put a little writing spot on there wanted to. I really love them. So what I'm going to do is go for a bit and I'm going to wait for my texture paste to dry then I'm going to come back and decorate them and then I'll get back on camera and show you what I've done. So I've finished making my slides. Here are the ones that we did together before. Now 
<laughs> I did, apparently, when I um, gessoed and painted all the ones I did previously, I did them together, which I didn't realise. And so the back got some gesso on that on, which was probably a good thing because I took them apart and actually painted the back with gesso so they don't look so new and black. And I think that will enable one to be able to write on the back with pencil or pen as well. So I'll show you what I've done. Now there was this one, which is a bit like this one. So I've used some of the words again from the kit there. That one I didn't paint on, but the rest I think I have. The rest are the ones that I did with my texture paste. So we've got this one. So what I did with the texture paste is I actually managed to find one of my little uh, stamping up ink pots. That was a very nice colour that went with this very well. So I just used one of my daubers and rubbed over the top of the texture paste with that and it brought out the um, pattern nicely. And I also went around the edges of the slide with the ink as well. So I added one of the labels from the Bits and Pieces Set 4 kit. I've used them on most of the slides because they go so nicely. And some of the beautiful cheesecloth. I just added some little bits of sticky bling in the middle of that one. And you can see it's a bit messy, but just so the back, and yes, that feels nice now to be able to be written on. You could also embellish it or stamp it or whatever. I quite like it like that. So I've got that one. And then I did this one. It's got a hydrangea and some fern leaves in there. On the back it's like that. I stuck a big fern in the back so you see that as the focal point mostly on the back. And I've got this reddish one and I used some different coloured cheesecloth. And I've been cutting down some of the labels just to make them work where I wanted them. Don't mind the red dot there that was initially there because it goes with the reds that I've got on this one. And the last one's a little bit different. I used one of the flowers that I'd cut out, a rose, and I actually used matte medium to apply that. And one of the labels I broke, I ripped the bits out of just to apply down the side here. And I really love this. The picture in there is from a encyclopedia or some such book, just a little picture. And on the back, I've stuck the label. It's a bit crooked, but I will. I just inked the back of the picture a bit so it wasn't so white and put the label on. Just had a bit of interest when you turn it over. You could add another flower in there as well. I just um, didn't want to have to cut out another one, <laughs> basically. So I thought a label will do. <laughs> it sort of looks like a serial number or something, I thought. So that is it. I actually really love the way these turned out and it's hidden all the writing really, really nicely. I'll probably make a pile of these because I have so many of these slides. So yeah, if you can't get your hand on any slides, um, you know, you can just cut slide shapes out of your card stock or some junk cardboard or whatever you've got lying around. So I hope you enjoyed that and it's given you some ideas. So I will link which crafter you do shop below as well as the kit that I am using this month, which is the Vintage Flowers Collection Set 2. I'll also put a link to the Bits and Pieces Set 4, which I've been using for the labels and that. And I'll also link to the other members of the Witchcraft Do You Do design team. Yay! So there's Kylie's card craft. Kylie's an amazing crafter and she has been making this month a altered book. So um, if you've never made one before, it's where you get a book and rip out some pages and stick other pages together and then embellish that rather than um, take all the pages out and put pages back in. 
So if you've ever wanted to make one of them but not quite sure how to do it, go and check that out. Um, it's very popular um, and she's a great teacher. So I think you'll really enjoy that one. And now there's also Lynn from Pretty Paper Craft 67. So she's been making some awesome bits and pieces as well. So go and check out the lovely ladies and show them some support. Okay, so that is it for me for this month for my Witchcraft Do You Do Design Team projects. I shall be on again next month um, if I can figure out something to do. <laughs> so be good and I will see you again soon. Bye.